Hi there, in the all new part four of this video series, I finally get into the wiring of my Usenest WorkBee CNC, but not until after I've made a few changes. That's coming up next. And welcome back. You know, probably the only benefit of having waited almost a year before completing my CNC project is that I've had the opportunity to chat with a few other owners and see other Usenest WorkBee machines in action. And having done that, I realized that I'd prefer to have the spoiler board supports on their lower settings. And if I wanted to change them, well, now's the time. It's a simple enough process, basically unscrewing the bits and reattaching them in a different place, but one thing I did find useful when using the drop-in T-nuts was to run some tape over the heads of the corresponding M5 bolts just to keep them from turning. This way I can align the T-nuts to just drop straight into the V-grooves, which is a real time saver when you're trying to line three of these up at a time. So that's where the printed manual ends. Uh, excellent printed manual, and you switch to PDF manuals. Uh, highly recommend getting the actually downloading the PDFs to an iPad or a tablet, then you can zoom in really easily on the illustrations. Uh, one slight curiosity uh, discrepancy between the printed manual and the online manuals, PDF manuals, is that there's, there's an extra step in the online manual that's to put the router mount on the Z axis which I'm going to do because it's going to make it feel a bit more sort of complete um, and if it turns out that's wrong well I can take it off easily enough uh, but basically it's a, it's a very nice little aluminium piece that's machined and you need to put the four corner brackets on and then mount it onto there about a third of the way down just using the supplied T-nuts and bolts so I'll get on and do that now and then we can start thinking about wiring and stuff like that So there we are, it looks uh, a little bit more workman-like, doesn't it? I mean, it's got a router in it. Um, I opted to get the adapter ring for the Makita, because I was planning on getting the Makita. In fact, I was originally trying to get this whole thing built as cheaply as I could, hence using the little Katsu. Uh, I think this has gone on for so long, I think I'm just going to get it up and running as soon as I can, so I probably will swap this out for something a bit more robust, uh, the Fane, Fane do a little spindle which is supposed to be very good and Maffel do one as well which is uh, very good but a lot more money so we'll, we'll, I've still yet to think about that but it feels a bit more purposeful doesn't it? A little bit more workmanlike when you've got something actually on there. Um, so that's the bulk of that, obviously I'll take this off, I'm not going to leave it on. But that is finally the mechanical build done and we can get on with thinking about the electrics and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. So lots of this is just following the excellent instructions. Um, there's no sort of, I'm not going to do a huge amount of video on these extra little bits of build. What I'm doing now, I'm doing the Y-axis moving end assembly, which is one of these, you put a couple of little T-lock nuts in there, and then again with the excellent pictures provided, you know, you can see which way around it needs to go and where that nut, uh, little bolts go through and they've all got little locking uh, nylon, nylock nuts on the back you probably find it useful, or certainly I found it useful to have a little 8mm socket. Just a little hand socket like that. And then you can oops, keep the nut in place while you tighten up the little bolt. So there's quite a few cables to get through this drag chain. Uh, mains cable, left and right, y-axis motor cables. I don't know if you have to still identify those as left and right, but I've marked them up 
just in case they look identical to me, but you never know. Uh, and the limit uh, switch as well. Uh, the mains cable is actually quite hefty, quite stiff, and there's quite a lot of it. So what I found quite useful was to feed that through. So there it goes. Comes all the way through to the end. And then you can use the cable itself to pull the rest of the cables through just by using a little bit of tape around each one. And with the cables threaded through the drag chains, I can fix the mounting points, the fixed end and moving end that I made earlier, in place. I'm always a little bit nervous when the instructions say uh, it will require some force to click the drag chain fixed end into place. Mm. Let's give it a go. Zoom you in a little bit closer. See that? Essential extra tool, I think. So this is one of those parts where uh, the newer version, the current version, is much more up to date. In the older version, like I've got here, you actually have to assemble the power supply unit yourself, all of the rest of the gubbins. Uh, in the current one, uh, that all comes pre-assembled, so you don't have to do this. I have to go and rootle around a bit and dig out the old versions of the manuals, which are all archived on the USNS website, thankfully. Uh, and basically, it's, it's fairly straightforward, uh, but obviously good to follow the instructions when you're doing something like this. So I'm just going to connect the wires up and uh, fingers crossed we can then power this up, get it tested, make sure it's outputting 24 volts exactly. Uh, and then I think we might be in a position to, uh, to move on. So I'll get that done first and then we'll see what happens next. Well, this is the moment of truth. Uh, it's all assembled to the best of my knowledge. Plug this in and see if we get power. On and on. And nothing. Okay, that's reading 25 volts. So we can. Uh, Fiddle around with this. That's reading twenty four volts exactly. Okay, twenty four volts so far, so good. Next. And I'll leave it there for this part of the video series. Join me next time when I discover that an earlier error on my part needs a fairly drastic solution. And don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop videos. Consider joining the Patreon party too at patreon.com forward slash 10 minute workshop as well as a name credit at the end of the public videos. Patreon supporters also get access to a weekly exclusive video including behind the scenes and additional week in the workshop vlogs and other good stuff. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time in the 10 minute workshop. Take care.